Here's the challenge though, a lot of people with liver issues like uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or just fatty liver mm -hmm. from excessive carbohydrate consumption inactivity would benefit from a ketogenic diet, but yet we need to make the bile from the liver and all that. So it's like it's you kind of need to restore this digestive health in order to adapt on a ketogenic diet. For sure. And just knowing it's more than just taking a probiotic. So mm -hmm. just sometimes slowly adjusting into a higher fat diet can give your body the tools it needs to be like, okay, this is happening. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, induce gut trauma because I had, you know, six bacon and eggs to this morning or every morning for a week and now I feel like crap. Right. Um, so slowly introducing certain fats and seeing what fats you do well with. Um, you know, coconut oil is usually, sometimes it can be a really good starter fat and sometimes it can be a really negative starter right. fat. So it's all about the person and knowing where you are. So just because somebody does really well with 70% fat doesn't necessarily mean start eating 70% fat. You know, slowly work your way into it, especially depending on how athletic you are, or it's so personal, and I want people to know that. Like, it's gonna be different for every single person, not because you're broken, but because your genetics and because of the, your past diets and your, your metabolism and who you are in this moment is different than who I am in this moment. Hey friends, it's Mike Maltzel here with High Intensity Health. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're live with Emily Schramm. She's a nutritional therapist and personal trainer. We're gonna take a deep dive into problems associated with getting into ketosis and how we can uh, improve our digestive function, look at pancreatic function, liver gallbladder health. I think that's a huge point, Emily. A lot of people kind of miss, we were talking offline mm -hmm. about how some people like, they dive into a low carb ketogenic style diet because they have blood sugar issues and we know that pancreas can be challenged and that affects like bile release. Exactly. I think this is something that was such a huge epiphany when I was going through Nutritional Therapy Association because I'm such a believer in a high fat diet and I do really well in a high fat diet. So I wanted the whole world to do well in a high fat diet and I would see some issues that came with it, whether it was digestive upset or some things that people are just saying it's common knowledge. Like mm -hmm. one, in order to have a regular bowel movement, you have to take magnesium or in order to not have to run to the bathroom, just slow down MCT consumption. But there's something bigger than that. And I think we have to know anytime there's digestive stress, there is gut stress and there's brain stress and there's body stress. And so take that stuff seriously. If you're eating higher fat and it's causing issues um, with your gut, then dig into that and figure out why. And I was asking those questions. Why would that be? Um, is it because we're not breaking down the fat? And one thing that kept coming up was when you look at why we are going high fat anyway, we want to control blood sugar. That's the best reason why, to, why we eat high fat, right? We want to make sure that we have stable blood sugar throughout the day and we're not crashing and burning and tapping into cortisol. And one thing that can do that is eating more fat. But a lot of times when we eat more fat, we also forget that blood sugar, the pancreas, does a lot more than just control that cortisol level and control our glucose levels and it does a lot for digestion so when we're already stressed out with blood sugar we need to make sure it's taken care of and so that we can break down the fat that we're eating whether that's coming from a gallbladder side and a liver function side or pancreatic enzyme side because both are tied into breaking down fat yeah so it's really a big key. picture yeah well, let's talk about the roles of the pancreas with regards to digestion a lot of people think oh pancreas and insulin but you talked mm -hmm. about exocrine versus endocrine let's break that yeah, down yeah so pancreas is a pretty fascinating organ. It does a lot for us. And a big thing that it does for us is once we get, um, basically once our stomach passes through food, our pancreas releases enzymes and it tells our body, okay, it's time to start breaking down that fat. Mm -hmm. And so then we start releasing the bile in order to break down fat. Because fat digestion, unless it's an MCT or a medium chain triglyceride, does not happen in the stomach. It happens after that. And so the pancreas does a big job. I mean, all those enzymes, all that, the CCK, all of the things that it does to break down the fat is happening after we actually consume and after stomach acid is doing its job. So big piece we think of it always with insulin we always think about it with blood sugar which yeah. of course it does both um, but we have to take care of it in both ways and make sure that if one is stressed maybe so maybe your blood sugar is stressed maybe it's also digestively being stressed as well right yeah, so the pancreas point, it's actually within seventh intercostal, so it's not necessarily the pancreas itself that you're palpating. Mm -hmm. It's there's a point. You can always look up Chapman reflex or Bennett's reflexes sure. for pancreas. And then also for, I always teach people the HCL and enzyme point. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes breaking down the stomach acid, like do we have enough stomach acid to break down, which is more for carbs and proteins, but then enzymes you can also check into too. So those are two points you can find on your own and push and see, okay, is that tender? Because if that's tender, 
tender, that's a warning sign that mm -hmm. we are maybe missing that nutrient and we're missing out on the full benefits of actually digesting this great food that we're eating. And then at the same time, working on stress, you know, I take oils and I rub on my vagal nerve. Oh, wow. um, I, so anything peppermint or anything that's very calming mm -hmm. for you, if you rub, um, just try to stimulate vagal nerve. You yeah. probably know Dr. Karazian's gargling and chewing gagging and, yeah. and chewing and just trying to get those to stimulate because vagal nerve is so tied into stomach acid production. Mm -hmm. um, but then also just like getting your mind right for I'm going to eat food. Yeah. I need to calm down. I need to not do it in my car. I need to not do it <laughs> like I do. I can put Instagram down for a minute. <laughs> yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah, just really being connected with your food can be the best thing for that. But what I see with the gallbladder specifically is a lot of people on low fat or non fat diets switching very quickly to high fat or just adding more fats and their gallbladder doesn't know how, their bile basically doesn't know how to break it down. So yeah. the bile becomes bad because we have no good fats. Mm -hmm. And now we're kind of in this catch 22 of now we're eating good fats, but our bile isn't able to break down those fats. So how do we figure out what kind of support we need? If we don't have a gallbladder, beta plus is one that basically ox bile, any yeah. sort of ox Supplemental, bile. Supplemental, you need yes, that. Yes, that's, that's one time where I'll say you'll probably need this for a long time sure. you know you'll have to take this in order for your body to break down these good fats mm -hmm. but a lot of times what I've seen is when you switch very quickly to high fat and you cause kind of this like gut trauma because there's so much fat and your body doesn't know what to do with it because yeah. we don't have good gallbladder function then beta TCP or some sort of taurine supplement is mm -hmm. really key to making sure we're giving the bile the right tools so that it can do what it's supposed to do.